Hello, everyone. I'm here at the with the Technology Reboot Camp, and I'm here with uh, Dan Rupel, Director of Field Services for Tr Strong Technical Services, and he's going to be going over with us today projector power-ups. Good to see you, Dan. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks to the folks at ICTA and the folks at uh, Box Office Pro for uh, for hosting this, and uh, look forward to getting the uh, industry back on board and uh, theaters opening up real soon here. So, All right. So uh, what are some of the first things we can do uh, to uh, get these projectors powered up? All right. So we're going to start with projector power-ups. Uh, our first slide is booth environment and general practice. Before we actually start to power up the projection systems and get everything tested, there's a few things environmentally uh, that we should probably go through beforehand. Um, so prior to powering up your cinema equipment, ensure that the booth climate is set to operating temperature and all exhaust systems are operating. Um, ideally, we're going to go through at that point in time after, after everything's up to temperature and in inspect the large projector compartments. Um, check for water damage, check for animal intrusion, check for any chewed wiring, um, any debris that's been brought in from rodents or anything like that, we're going to want to get that stuff cleaned up. Um, obviously, based on comfort, comfortability, uh, clean out what you can. Uh, if you're not comfortable, always feel free to reach out to your local cinema service provider uh, and they can come in and do that work for you. Um, on, outside of that, we're going to want to check air filter conditions, coolant levels. Um, in the event that you have a xenon lamp set up, you're going to want to check and make sure that uh, the xenon lamp is properly installed and, and ready to go before you fire that up. So uh, in most of our general discussions with the manufacturers, it's been, you know, a general consensus of 48 hours prior to testing that everything should be powered on. Um, I think looking at this from the bigger perspective, we're probably looking at, you know, a week or maybe longer. Uh, just from a standpoint, we want to make sure that you guys have every opportunity to get your equipment uh, up to speed. If you should run into any issues, having the ability to get parts, having the ability to get your cinema service provider uh, field technicians out to do service work for you, preventative maintenance, uh, and so on. Um, so a majority of this stuff can be gone through uh, at the booth level, but if you're uncomfortable with any aspect of this process, please consult your cinema service provider uh, or manufacturer to request it. Uh, assistance. All right, great. Uh, can we go into the sp uh, projector specific uh, items? Absolutely. Uh, so we have projector specific items from Christie, Cineonic, NEC, and Sony. Um, as many of you know, the the Christie, NEC, and Cineonic Barco projectors are um, all DLP base equipment. So a lot of this stuff is going to be uh, redundant. So I'll try to get through as much of this stuff as I can as quickly as possible. Um, obviously, we want to follow all previous general practices and environmental steps. Um, from there, we're going to want to check and secure, make sure that all power cables have been secured, um, all circuit breakers are turned on and working properly. Um, once you get to that point, you can power on the equipment, uh, bring it out of standby if necessary. And once the equipment is all green, then you can start to move along with the, the testing. Uh, you're going to want to check alignment calibrate colors and brightness uh, as needed and, and as time allows, and then ultimately move on to verifying encrypted content and functionality of all your automation. Uh, we have some links at the end of the presentation that are going to point you both to the individual manufacturer mandates, but also to uh, encrypted content and, and some content that's going to be a bit available to test uh, right up until it's available from the actual uh, exhibitors. So Chrissy did put in some specific stuff about laser projection models. Um, the They are requesting a minimum of 24 hours of stable temperature and humidity prior to operation. Um, outside of that, the general consensus is, you know, powering the equipment up every seven days for a duration of about three hours. That's going to give you ample time to get the bat internal batteries charged up, um, and basically just, you know, run through of operation. Uh, on the Christie CP2000ZX, M, Solaria 1, and Solaria 1 Plus, it's recommended that these units be powered on every three days if they have an IMB Series 2. So 
At this point in time, we'll move on to Sinionic Barco. Um, Sinionic Barco touched on the fact that this is a, you know, a prime opportunity to get as much preventative maintenance done as possible. Um, the theaters are empty, uh, so th there's no better time than now to, you know, perform maintenance A and B, to uh, get filters clean, get lens surfaces clean, clean port windows, uh, vacuum out the projector completely, um, and really go through a full calibration uh, of everything from top to bottom. Uh, one of the things that you're going to want to make sure of um, throughout doing the sequential power-ups, the, the every seven days or every three days, um, you know, make sure that your real-time clock, ICP clocks, make sure that the NTP time server, that those are syncing up properly. Uh, in some cases, if, if the time drift gets more than six minutes, you might be required to replace an ICP board. Um, so if you notice any errors like that, please reach out to your NOC service provider or the individual manufacturer. On the NEC side, um, again, a general follow-up for the, the practice or general practice items. Uh, they touched specifically on some of the items as far as the Gore board for the Series 1 and the Enigmas for the Series 2s. Uh, typically, those batteries last about six months. Um, Hopefully we're not going to get to that point. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're trending at just a few months right now, and, and we're hoping that this shouldn't become a, an issue moving forward. So uh, same, similar process, powering up. Once you get to the status, make sure everything's green before moving forward, and then you know general checks of alignment, color calibration, uh, and verifying KDMs. Uh, on to Sony, uh, as you all, most of you know, uh, Sony is a little bit different uh, in the way that they are built versus the DLP systems. Uh, most Sony equipment is going to have a UPS in place. Uh, Sony recommends to power up the UPS 48 hours prior to testing to ensure proper charging of the batteries. Uh, one of the primary focuses for auditoriums that have 3D is to check 3D convergent uh, as well as all the other alignment. So. Um, with the Sony units, um, they don't have typically a standalone server. So you're going to want to check hard drive status um, on all of the Sony equipment, as well as the uh, chiller status on the 815. Um, some of the specific information for that is to inject distilled water and run for 15 minutes, check the flow rate, visually check the system to make sure that it's not dirty. And if it's dirty, you know, perform manual cleaning. Uh, if any of this happens and you're not comfortable with it, uh, as previously stated, please feel free to reach out to the Sony Network Operations Center or your local field service provider. That's great. Thank you very much, Dan. I think, uh, you know, with the links here when we show them, uh, I think the big key takeaway here is that uh, please give yourself adequate time to go in, power, uh, clean things up, power things up, uh, get some good checks in there, just in case uh, we have uh, a need for, you have a need for uh, service uh, to call uh, your service provider or your NOC to, uh, for them to address it um, accordingly. So <clears throat> that's uh, Dan Rupel with Strong Technical Services. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank.